romantic comedies end when the two main characters end up together. And machine learning tutorials usually end up when the model is finished training. But what happens next? Do we live happily ever after? That's what we're going to talk about today. Today we're going to do some text sentiment analysis. I've worked with the Twitter sentiment data. We had millions of tweets with their text body and their respective sentiment target, where zero is very negative and four is very positive. So it's a very complicated process, which involves a lot of pre-processing. You have to clean the data, tokenize the words, and then make a word to vec model, use that embeddings in a machine learning model. And this took a couple of hours, just training the model took about an hour and a half. Uh, but we skip all this process, we're happy with the results, and now we actually want to use this in another place. So now we need to save everything that can be replicated in another environment. So what do we need? Well, first, obviously, the trained model waits. Uh, so Keras has a native ability to save the trained model into a file, very convenient, but other things are also important. Second would be the tokenizer. Tokenizer is the model which takes a word in string and gives it a number, but it was fitted on this specific data. So we will use it in another API, in another app. We will type in a tweet and we will need to encode each text word in the same way that it was done in this training process. So we have to save all this information. And the tokenizer doesn't have a native ability like Keras, so we have to save it inside the pickle dump and then we will load it again with pickle. Uh, other things like the word of vec models and encoder, actually we will not need for inference, but it is needed in case we want to do retraining. The word of vec model is already integrated inside the Keras model, so it's convenient to plan the model in this way. Now we want to create an app which will allow us to interact with our trained model. So we will use Flask, which is a lightweight web development framework, which allows us to do REST API with Python. So if you don't know REST API, I recommend you see another video about it, which will explain it in a bit more detail, but it will allow us to make post request, HTTP request, in order to send text to our server, which will host the model, and we will be able to make get request from the server to get the result of the model for the sentiment analysis. So first, let's see the final result. I ran the app and I get a link to where the app is hosted. So specifically now, it's my local host. It's hosted on my computer. And we see this web page here. And we can input a tweet. So the browser already remembers my previous attempts. And I can say, today I had a great day. And we can send it to our uh, servers by submit. And we get back the result from the model, which the sentiment analysis for the tweet is very positive, very high. We can go back and then maybe try a negative tweet, worst day of my life, submit it, and then we get a very low score uh, indicating that it's a very negative tweet. So we can see that everything works. We can post information to the server and get back information from the model. Now let's dive in a little bit deeper. Let's understand better how the Flask project is structured. So at first we need to import all the relevant packages to make the Python code work. And then we initialize the Flask app in the top of the page. I'll skip a bit to the end. Eventually the main run will be just to load all the relevant data and then run the app. So what's inside load? Inside load, we load all the things that we've said in the previous project. So I initialize a global services dictionary. It will just be easier to communicate that way between functions. So we need to load the Keras model with the load function from Keras. And we need to load the tokenizer with pickle. We open the file and then do load from pickle to get the same instance. And another important thing to create is a default TensorFlow graph, which we will always reuse when we call the Keras model. If you don't do that, you will either get duplicate graphs, which will run you out of memory, or you will just get an error that the graph isn't recognized for the inference. Okay, so I've sticked the web page app up here so you'll have better context on what we're talking about. Now we're moving to the Flask part of the code. And in Flask, every page is defined by a function. And this app root decorator is what binds this functionality to a specific uh, host domain. 
So this is where you would type the root. So specifically here, we don't have a root. Everything is on the main page of the host. But if I would type here, analyze, so this specific page would be routed to the host you see there, slash analyze. And you can redirect to different pages for different functions this way. So everything you see here is inside analyze. And you can see that analyze gets the method get and post because we want to send information for this page, the text, and we want to get information from this page, the model result. So the default behavior for this page is what you see here above. It's a form which enacts a post method because we send information to the server with this form. And you can see this HTML snippets construct what you see up there visually. We have type a tweet to analyze its sentiment. And then we see the word tweet and the text box, which we input the text through. And it's named as tweet. This is important because we will use this naming later. And we have the submit input, which is a confirmation that the form is completed and we want to do the uh, request to post. Okay, so let's actually do that. Let's post. So I'll type in uh, not good, not bad. And we get the result. And let's see how it is implemented in the code. So when we've typed submit, we've made a request method for posting. So this got a true value. And then we got uh, the request form. We get the tweet from it. This is why it was important to name the text as tweet. And it's stored inside this tweet variable. Now we have to replicate the process of the training procedure uh, for this tweet. So this is why we've uh, saved the doc tokenizer model to encode the text to its respective numbers. And we need to pad the sequence to 300 because this is what the model expects to see. Now we use the TensorFlow graph, the same graph as default, like I've stated before. And now we call the model on this tweet uh, to get the prediction on the sentiment uh, analysis. And the result is displayed in this HTML uh, snippet. This is what is returned from this post request. And we can see the text sentiment analysis for tweet is and with the prediction rounded up and displayed in a percentage format. And we can also see the button that we see here, the back, which has a reference to the previous uh, domain. It makes a refresh with the text back on it. If we press the button, then we are routed back to the previous page. So the app works, but there's still one little problem in terms of deployment. This app is hosted on my personal computer and I have everything I need on my machine to make it work. I have Python and I have all these packages installed in my virtual environment. The next step would be to make sure that if we're hosting it on another computer or another machine server, uh, it will still work in the same way. So that's what I'll cover next week and I hope you'll enjoy it. And thank you very much for all your support up until now.